Thanks. Uh, my name is Max Gorley. I'll be presenting uh, a short presentation about uh, butterfly energy systems, what we do, and also give you an introduction of how to start working with the beagle bone black or uh, any of the beagle bone related systems. So butterfly energy systems, what we do is we do uh, a number of different control type systems for the house or for industrial applications in commercial buildings, for example. So energy management using solar water heaters, <coughs> to, for example, heat a pool and control all aspects of that. Uh, thermal controls, home automation is a lot of what we're getting into using the home automation protocol through Zigbee. Uh, as well as environmental considerations, so we're focusing on a lot of green technology, uh, solar heating, ground source heat pump, uh, mini splits, that kind of idea, uh, in residential, commercial, and institution applications. So the project we're currently working on that got started, in a sense got started at NBCC here as well, was to create a, a system to control a home using a central controller, which uh, we've at this point selected to use uh, BeagleBone, which is a Linux-based uh, system, as well as a, a network of wireless sensors using Zigbee Home Automation, with always the idea of maybe expanding out different wireless technologies as may be necessary, uh, as well as wired sensors, so that if there's currently if somebody currently, for example, has a solar water heater on the roof that has a wired sensor in it, we can just directly plug into that and not have to get a separate wireless sensor or a separate type of sensor for it. We can use what's already existing there. So, uh, why use single board computers? Some of the reasons to use single board computers is they're compact. Uh, nowadays, you get a lot of these uh, single board computers or microchip based solutions that are smaller or about the same size as a, as a credit card. Uh, they're very low power, so they run at 5 volts and just a few watts of power, under 10 watts in most cases. Uh, so some of the examples are the Raspberry Pi, which uh, a lot of people use for media type of applications because it tends to focus on that. Uh, BeagleBone Black, which has a lot of inputs and outputs available, or something like the uh, Freescale Freedom, which is more like a micro a microcontroller uh, solution as opposed to a full uh, fledged operating system. So it's lower power and it has lower development costs because everything's on the board and ready to go, and you can plug it into your <coughs> system. You don't have to design the whole board from the ground up. So why did we choose the BeagleBone Black specifically, or why work with the BeagleBone Black? What are, what are the advantages? Uh, it's a full-fledged computer, so if you're familiar with Linux on a desktop or on a server environment, all the same things are available for you using uh, the BeagleBone. It has a lot more input and output flexibility. There's up to 65 uh, general purpose I.O. Uh, as well as it's open source hardware. So if the producers of this, uh, either BeagleBone or CircuitCo, go bankrupt tomorrow, you can still go to another manufacturer and say, make this for us, here's the bill of materials which they give you, and the hardware design, everything is open source. Uh, it also works straight out of the box, so there's nothing more you have to do than plug it in, and away it goes. The operating system is already loaded on there, there's uh, four gigabytes of flash memory, that can store the operating system. Uh, as well as a very low cost. So right now the BeagleBone Black uh, version that they have is $55. And the other advantage is that if you wanted to make it for, use it in your own company and have your own label on it rather than using the BeagleBone's label, uh, Circ CircuitCo will actually create custom uh, white label versions for you. So here are some of the, the specifications of the BeagleBone Black that, we'll, that I'm working, we're working with, and just to show you what it looks like, it's mounted on this board here. Uh, it has a TI 
AM, uh, Texas Instruments AM uh, 335X, one gigahertz ARM Cortex A8 processor. So very fast processor for uh, such a small, low power system. Uh, as well as 512 megabytes of DDR3 RAM, uh, four gigabytes of onboard flash, and has a number of peripherals and ports available that you can work with. Uh, so you have USB, Ethernet, HDMI, uh, and two headers that you can, uh, that have 46 pins each that you can have all the general purpose I.O. and serial buses all access to those pins. So there's also I2C, uh, SPI, CAN, and UART for the serial communications. And for people that are just getting started that want to have something cool to attach to it, they're not having to design their own board uh, attachment from the ground up necessarily, is you can get uh, one of the ones now that they have is a Beetle, Beetlebone view, so you can plug a touchscreen uh, LCD directly into it and use that to create any sort of applications you might put on a screen and interact that way. Uh, RS-232, there's capes that plug directly into the Beetlebone uh, breadboard, which just allows you to create whatever uh, prototype application you want to try out and see how it works out and plug different things in and out so you can actually uh, have a breadboard directly connected to Beeglebone. Uh, there's capes that do weather, uh, machine, to meet, machine communication using GPS, GSM, or some other sort of uh, data modem, uh, as well as Wi-Fi and a camera, for example. So, what I want to focus on today is how do you get started? What do you need? Now when you're working with the BeagleBone, uh, the first thing you're going to have to ask yourself is what operating system do I want to work with? And generally it's going to be some version of Linux. So the standard that is now shipped with the BeagleBone Black is Debian. And that's it. A good, there's a good large ecosystem in, in Debian to work with. There's a lot of available libraries and applications and pre-compiled binaries, so you don't have to compile everything from scratch yourself. Uh, pre the previous standard was Angstrom, which they've had some issues with the stability of Angstrom, which is some of the reason why they switched over to Debian. Uh, Ubuntu is another option as well. Uh, the latest version of Ubuntu 14.04 is now working with the Beetlebone Black. Uh, another option is Arch Linux, or even if you wanted to go to a real-time operating system, which is some people may want to do, you can uh, develop using QNX or some other version of a real-time operating system I think are available for uh, Beetlebone Black. There are many distributions besides just those, but those are the main ones that are being used by by a larger amount of people. So I don't know if I'm getting my acronyms wrong, but is it, is it, is it didn't BlackBerry buy QNX? Or is it something else? Uh, BlackBerry bought QNX, yeah. So, so it's still open, though, kind of thing? No. It's not open. It's, but it is an operating system you can put on there, but it's not a totally open system. Which is part of the reason why we're not working with QNX. We're working with uh, Debian or Angstrom or Ubuntu. And in terms of a programming language, if you wanted to get, get it to do something, what, do you, what are your options? Now, one of the easiest to get started with is a scripting language because there's nothing to compile and you can test out your code directly just by typing in a line and seeing what happens. And so, uh, for example, one of the things that ship, ships with it is the Cloud9 IDE, which is meant for web, it's, meant for web applications. It's a web-based IDE, so you can go direct, you don't have to install anything. It's all done through a browser. Uh, if you're familiar with JavaScript or Node.js, then that's, uh, it's perfect to use that. And it has a library called BoneScript, which has function calls. Uh, it uses Arduino function calls. So if you're familiar with Arduino, it's very easy to port some of that uh, code over to 
the beetle bone. So you can use this very similar function calls to interact with the peripherals that are available on the BeagleBone Black. Uh, another option for scripting languages is Python, and they have there's a library developed through Adafruit, uh, BeagleBone IO Python, which allows you to easily interact with the uh, ADC, ADC and the uh, general purpose inputs and outputs, as well as some of the serial communication. Now, those aren't the only ones. Because you're operating Linux, you can install any scripting language that you want to use. Uh, but these are the ones that have libraries that are already pre-written, so you don't have to write your own custom library for a lot of the peripherals. Another option, and one that we're working with as well, is de <coughs> developing with C++. So if you actually want to compile binaries to run on the system, then there's uh, a number of options for what kind of development environment to use. Uh, one of the ones is uh, Eclipse or NetBeans. Uh, we've been using something like Eclipse because it's a, a full-fledged uh, development environment that you can do debugging as well as compiling and remote, uh, remote debugging. So you don't actually have to be on the operating system, the BeagleBone itself. You can cross-compile. Uh, there's a number of tool chains, of it, tool chains available, uh, but the, the ones that, that come with uh, Ubuntu, for example, uh, you can just tell, them, tell Ubuntu to install the ARM Linux new ABI tool chain, and there's nothing more you need to do to set up your tool chain, uh, other than just setting up clips to do the compiling. Uh, and remote debugging is done through the GDB multi-architecture. It, there are a number of different options for remote debugging, but that's the one that works out fairly easy outside, out of the box, so you don't have to do a lot of figuring out, really. Now, what well, are some... If I can, if I can ask, yeah, sure. why, why, why are you choosing to change over from a script to a compiled language? IP, speed? Uh, Dan comes down to speed, is the main reason we're working with a compiled language versus a scripting language. <coughs> Uh, so for input and output, uh, most input and output devices are abstracted into a uh, into the file system as an ob object you can interact with there using uh, file input and output lang language of your in the language of your choice. So you're not just restricted to C++ or C. Um, any language that you're familiar with that has file I/O you can use that. It just means you, you have to write your you have to write your own custom library to do particular things. Uh, now, in order to actually change what the various pins do, you use uh, a device tree, which describes the hardware and the, the pin muxing, and it allows you to change what the inputs, what the pins do at runtime, not at uh, at startup or at compile time. And there's also, if you're, there's also what's called a device tree overlay, which goes, is, just describes the nodes and properties of the device tree that you're interested in changing. And using the Cape Manager, that uh, allows you to enable or disable certain overlays, and the overlays can figure out what capes might be uh, conflicting with others. So that way you know, can I use these two capes at the same time? 